remember being a kid and watching the show with Bob Ross and I realized when I was really young that it was super possible, you know. And I watched a lot of cartoons and I copied a lot of cartoon characters like The Little Mermaid, a lot of Disney characters. And I just like don't really remember a time in my life where I didn't want to be painting. I started taking up nature photography about three years ago. So I have my big camera with my big lens and I'm outside and I'm shooting and I'm chasing birds and I'm watching for you know, changes in the environment and nature. And what's great about living in New York City is that it's so... New York City has, is one of the most biodiverse places uh, and we have bridges, we have water, we have sand, we have so many different places we can go. And so when I go out and shoot, I think about the environment and I bring the photos back in and I look over them and I go like, this would make a really great composition. What kind of story can I tell with these photos that I've taken? And through that I use a lot of Photoshop. I take up a lot of other research, like if I picked a bird, a specific kind of bird, I would spend time and research the stories of the bird. Or I would also think about what, what can this story tell about myself or my friends? You know, like how can the characters how can the birds, how can the animals, how can the environment tell this particular story? So. I remember being in a, an art class at School of Visual Arts. Rather, it was an aesthetics class. It was um, a class about you know visuals, the aesthetics, like aesthetic theory. And he told us a story about these birds called bower birds. So, Bowerbirds live in New Guinea and Australia. And in order for them to catch a mate, rather, in order for the male to catch a mate, they collect a lot of objects and they create these like formations and then they collect all these sticks and they build these, these structures. Sometimes they look like this, sometimes they look like caves. And, and this little bird collects all these objects and they arranges them beautifully in front of the structure called the bower. And, and then the female bird comes down and she checks out what he did. And if she's like, oh, he did a really great job. He did great collecting, great formations, great structures. Then she will give him a cue to dance. And then he dances and then he sings. And if she likes it, then they mate, you know? Mm -hmm. She goes off and raises the little chickadees by herself. Um, and I thought about that story. I thought about that story for a long time because I was going through a transitional period in my early 30s where I I did I, I was feeling kind of lost and then I remembered this story and I thought all right cool So how will I make this work if I decide to like be inspired by this bower bird? So I went outside and I collected objects. I collected sticks by the parks by me. I started collecting uh, beads, jewelry. My friends gave me old clothes. Um, a lot of little things. And I started creating bowers in my house, in my apartment. I, and I started taking photographs of them. And I was like, well, this is really cool. Like, I, what a fun, it, it was such a fun thing to get out of my painting situation. It was kind of like making something sculptural. So I would build them, tear them down, take photos, build them, take photos, build them and take photos. And, and, and then I had all these like weird, I, meant, I, I wasn't a very good bower bird, but and they were not structurally sound, but they were really cool to look at. I had beads, I had jewelry, I had all these sticks, I, I tied ribbon on them. And then I started going online and looking up photos of these birds. I mean, there's like so many different types. They're all different colors, like blue, orange, you know, and I started going on the internet and cobbling together these, uh, these stories around them. So I, you know, in a lot of ways, that story, the story of the bowerbird is so human, right? Like we, as creative people especially, we make all of these things. You know, people, we collect furniture, we decorate our homes. And it was all to say, oh my God, this is, this is who we are. You know, we invite people, we show them, and it's like, this is who we are, and I, and I hope you like us. 
And so that was the story I decided to hook onto for the bowerbird. Like the, the bowerbird is all of us. You know, I mean, just me collecting all the stuff, you know, it was just, you know, part of the story. So I started painting these birds. And it was the first time I actually really painted birds. I was really hard. And I also taught myself acrylics because I, before that I was thinning down oil paintings and making them look like giant watercolors. So for about 10 years, I was making large oil paintings. And so I also decided that if I was going to change my work and start painting birds, I was going to completely change my work and teach myself acrylic painting. In 2019, I made two of my favorite and most complicated paintings. I wanted to create two three feet by three feet square paintings that look like they were uh, like a, a molding of a building, like a giant frame. So I, it took me months to make both of these paintings because they were both big and they were super elaborate and I had never attempted to paint architecture that way before. But in the end, they both look like what they call trompe l'oeil, like it's the, the illusion of, of, a, of, of the side of a building. So in the middle of them, there were like two circles in the middle of the moldings. Uh, one of them, I'm sorry, each painting had a, had a circle. And in the middle of the blue painting, I called it Earth. So in the middle of Earth, the Earth painting, is the bowerbird is like stepping on the edge of the frame. And in the background is the bower that he's created with a little humble blue house. And he's saying, this is what I have to offer you. I have, I give you like, like solid ground. I give you terra firma. I give you uh, stability. And here is this little house with my bower. And in the pink painting, which I call Heaven, um, the little bowerbird is up in the air um, with a star in his mouth. And here he's saying, I want to offer you the world. I want to offer you the heavens, the earth, the stars. I want to offer you everything. So another uh, painting in the series is called Tell Me What You Want, Tell Me What You Need. And in this painting, it shows on the very bottom a, a male bowerbird, and on top of, of the composition is a house with a female bowerbird. And I wanted to create a dialogue between the male and the female. And on and, and the very background is this neon castle. And, you know, many years ago, after a breakup, I had a friend give me some advice. She said, you have to think about the difference between the things that you want and the things that you need. So in this painting, you have the juxtaposition of the thing that you want, the castle, sure, this dream of becoming a princess. And, but then there's a house, this humble house. And really, in a lot of ways, that's kind of what you need, right? You, sure, the dream, castle, royalty, um, being treated like a princess. But then what you actually need is just a warm place to be with the person that you love and the people that you love. You know, so I created this in order to, to juxtapose these ideas of like want versus need. Um, you know, and with the little little birds kind of like, you know, chir chir chirping at each other and saying like, you know, thank you. Thank you for giving me this warm and safe place to be. Uh, so this painting came from uh, a trip that I took upstate to Beacon, and there was a, a building that had crumbled down, it was like just ruins, and I took photos of it, and when I was creating this painting, I wanted to kind of create like nothing, uh, something out of nothing, right? Like, so it's all ruined, it's just like, it was just a brick wall that was left up there, and I wanted to create a painting that included a lot of like negative space, like the sky, and I wanted to kind of create like this like world within this this uh, unit of, of of destruction, you know, like like being worn out. So I I created um, a composition that included a bower that I had created in my apartment. So I photoshopped that in, and I created this space. So it looks like he had like collected all of these beads, and he was just going over to like kind of attend to his little structure. And I put the little symbol up there because. Um, for a while, I was actually designing a lot of patterns for a lot of my work, and I had initially thought the whole painting would have like a big pattern, 
wallpaper, but then I decided to paint out to just keep it like a, a negative space, like just the sky. So I put a, a little dangling, like almost like a chandelier, like to kind of add a little something to it to kind of say like, you know, this is still something that he made, something that he might have created for himself. And he, he put it there and sort of it plays with the space and it plays with the bottom. And it's sort of the chandelier up there mimic, mimics the little, the jewelry and the collection that he has on the ground. Uh, the best thing that I got out of painting the Bowerbirds was it allowed me to make stories that, to think outside of myself, you know. I got to think about the story of this little bird that creates a whole life out of being an artist. This bird can, spends his entire life building bower, bowers to try to catch bait, his whole life. He collects things, he builds them, he tears them down, collects things, builds them, tears them down, he gets rejected. You know, like sometimes he'll work on a song, work on a dance, work on a bower, and still, no mate. That female bird doesn't like him. And yet, he still does it. He still does it over and over and over again. And I, I mean, that's all of us. That's all of us artists. We just keep, we keep doing it. What I've learned is that you, you can only get better by doing. And sometimes, still, no one cares. And if no one cares, at least you care. You know, at least you know that you've done the work. And in the end, that's kind of all that matters, right? Like, in the end, you're kind of just with you and your work. And the Bowerbird has taught me about relentless toil, <laughs> relentless practice, and maybe, possibly, you'll get the girl.